Hello and welcome to the Megabyte Monthly CEO Barometer. The idea of this show is that I uh, summarise all of the key research and data and analysis that the team at Megabyte have done over the last, uh, the last month, try and understand uh, the key trends and themes within that research and, uh, and data and uh, extrapolate that and try and find uh, key themes for, uh, you know, key, key themes that will play out over the next 12 months and more. Uh, this month we've split, separated the show into two videos to make it easier to consume. Uh, there is a se separate video looking at corporate activity, valuations, and share price performance. And in this video I'm going to uh, take a look at the financial performance and, and, uh, and trading of companies we track um, here in the UK technology sector. Try and again pull out some key themes, although it has been a pretty quiet month this month and uh, or last month. And um, I'll also talk a little bit about a handful of the key results that we've that we've looked at and we've analysed this month or last month, and, and understand kind of try and extrapolate from those what what the key messages are. Um, it, December is is never a, a busy, particularly busy month for results, as you will hear if you've listened to uh, or will listen to uh, the sister video to this on corporate activity. It was an incredibly busy month for corporate activity with some 76 deals announced, 40% up year on year. Um, I think a record month in some senses on corporate activity, particularly strong rebound in M&A. Results have been uh, less busy as they always are in December, but some interesting themes. I think probably the to start off with a few of the kind of key takeaways, as always, uh, the, the team analysed about 50 results and trading uh, statements during December and had some 35 conversations with management teams, uh, management teams either to do with those results or, or, and or to do with deals and corporate activity that had gone on during December. Um, as ever, subscribers get full access to all of our research and data. We produce full company uh, financials, detailed deal analysis on valuations and deal statistics, as well as written analysis and opinion on, on all of this stuff. If you're not a subscriber and you think it might be interesting to you, what we, you know, to understand the financial performance of your peers, particularly privately owned peers, where you might not get any, uh, uh, that we might be the, quite often are the only source of, 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 of independent, high quality financial analysis on those companies, and you want to benchmark your financial, financial performance or understand um, the, your strategy with regard to your competitors, or indeed if you're an investor in one of the businesses and want to achieve a similar thing, or you're advising one of those businesses, we'd love to hear from you. The best thing to do is to go to megabyte.com, click on the request a demo tab, and one of our lovely customer facing team will be very happy to help you. So to, to, to start with, just to pull out some sort of key themes, um, the, um, the, the, you know, the, 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 as I said, it's not been a particularly busy month, but uh, you know, the, 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 there is a real juxtaposition at the moment in the market. Um, it's been there all year, or most of the year, but it's, it's becoming particularly acute again, where you've got a very serious <coughs> negative development, difficulties, um, societal problems with COVID-19, as the pandemic has reached um, uh, crisis proportions again, and yet we are not, at the moment, it's early days, we're not seeing any signs of any serious trading weakness within the companies that we track, or indeed any pullback of investment that we did the first time around, which I think is a, is a key point. Now, we have to monitor that. <coughs> Excuse me. We have to monitor that going forward, clearly, because it's early days, but at the moment, it feels like uh, boardrooms in the technology sectors, we technology companies you track are looking through that. And this really plays into the theme that I've talked about a lot over the last few weeks where resilience, uh, you know, we saw uncertainty in, in the first period as, as the COVID pandemic hit. That moved to a very clear sense of resilience as we move through the summer and into the autumn. And I think, and I've talked about in the last couple of months, that resilience has really moved to, into a sense of renewed optimism and renewed confidence. And in many ways, more confidence uh, now than pre-COVID because there's a sense, uh, there's obviously the well, well documented by others and certainly us, uh, digital acceleration, acceleration of digital technologies, but there's also a sense that if the sector can, can weather such a storm as it weathered in 2020 that we can really push on with confidence. I don't see that changing at the moment um, and the results I think that we've seen and the trading updates we've seen uh, uh, over the last few weeks have really played to that trend. I would, however, say it is early days, say it again, and we really need to see what happens over the next four to eight weeks, I think, to get a sense of, 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 of validation of what I think will be the case, which is that I don't expect lockdown 3.0 in the UK to have a massive impact on, uh, on trading in the sector, but we have to see. It's, it's uncertain. Um, 
So um, just to so that, that that I think is the is the key theme. I think in terms of pulling out some of the uh, results and themes within those within the two key sectors we look at at Megabyte ICT and digital services and software and digital platforms to start with ICT and digital services. I think you know the resilience theme comes through with Computer Center probably stronger than it does with with it with any company in the in the in, in that we track, particularly the larger end of the companies we track. And Computer Center issued another very positive trading update at the end of December. And and the most interesting thing about that is that the the revenue numbers is broadly revenue numbers are broadly where we thought they would be and Computer Center thought they would be. Um, but their profit numbers are now expected to be 30% higher than they were expected to be pre-COVID. So that's largely to do with, 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 with cost savings, many of which won't be repeated once the business gets back to normality. But as we know, a lot of those costs that were there won't be repeated because people are now doing things differently. So it's a very strong underlying performance from Computer Center. And this week, as we went into the new year, a pretty solid trading update from SoftCat as well. I'll talk about that more in, the, in, the, uh, in, my, in this show next month. Elsewhere in ICT services, further evidence that the cybersecurity element of the sector remains in robust health. NCC Group in, in cyber services uh, issued a um, issued a tra another tra issued a trading update as well. It's a top end of expectations, and it just really underlines that all things cyber have, at the very least, for the most part, been solid, and in many cases have seen, received a boost from COVID. Um, in the private company world, in hosting, uh, we had a good, our analyst Philip Cast had a good uh, update uh, with uh, the recently appointed, fairly recently appointed CEO of UK Fast, Ian Brown, inflection-backed business that many of you all know has been through a turbulent couple of years with a dramatic fall from grace with the founder and former CEO of the business, Lawrence Jones. And what's so interesting to me about the recent figures from, uh, from UK Fast, which are really the first figures we've had since um, the proverbial hit the fan, um, and you know the, the business continues to trade double digit organic growth, great margins, great cash flow, all of the dynamics that would have attracted inflection to it in the first place. I'm not saying the last couple of years won't have been very challenging for the company and for inflection. I'm sure there have been huge challenges, but fundamentally, the joys of recurring revenue, uh, the, you know, the business continues to continues to trade well and produce strong results. You know, probably the most interesting thing for me coming out of the the, the conversations that Philip had with Ian Brown was. Uh, a renewed sense of, or actually, the, the UK Fast has never been that acquisitive. It has done some small acquisitions under the previous management, but it feels now that that is a much bigger, or going to be a much bigger part of UK Fast strategy going forward, as it is with so many companies, as I mentioned in, in, in my review of the corporate activity. So it's going to be really fascinating to see. Um, it's a pretty chunky business now, UK Fast. Uh, you know where it goes with that M and A strategy, with a with a big, well-funded investor behind it. So that's for me probably the biggest takeaway from that conversation with UK Fast. Elsewhere in hosting, IOMART, um, public companies you probably know, um, has been more than many caught in the crosshairs of the shift to the hyperscale as AWS, Azure, uh, etc. Uh, and is, is doing a good job, I think, of, of rejigging its business to move more towards cloud services away from pure hosting. Nevertheless, the, the, uh, the revenues were, uh, were only up slightly and that was for acquisitions and the pr profits were down. But they are making good progress there and, and the outlook is pretty decent. Uh, elsewhere in, in the ICT services sector, must talk about TalkTalk. Talk. Um, obviously, the big news with TalkTalk Talk has been the, uh, the ongoing Take Private with Penta, Tosca Fund and Charles Dunstan, which I talked about extensively in, uh, in my review of corporate activity as well. Uh, results at the same time as the recent bid was announced and um, you know, further really underperformance from TalkTalk. Talk. Uh, part of it's COVID related, but part of it's just underlying, uh, underlying uh, business performance. And uh, you know, the, the shareholders there or the remaining shareholders there will be hoping that a take private and a rejig of that business can re-energize it because it's a bit of a perennial underperformer. So, so no, nothing particularly in terms of thematic to pull out of the, the, those results other than, as I say, the continuing resilience and move to confidence, I think, from, from those businesses. Moving on to software and digital, um, quite a bit going on in fintech uh, in the software side. Uh, uh, Alpha Financial Software, which is a uh, listed business that provides software for uh, for the leasing, as I said, the leasing business, car leasing, but also equipment leasing. Bit of a torrid time after it listed, I think, in 2017. Uh, very difficult year of trading thereafter, but but has been making good steps to to, to get back uh, to health. And another trading update in December suggested that process was continuing and now expecting double digit organic growth in 2020. So that's a positive sign for Alpha. 
Um, also in fintech, quite a lot of news going in payments. You will have heard if you'd listened to the corporate activity review that um, there's a lot of corporate activity going on in payments. Uh, you know, I talked about um, the Go Cardless uh, f fundraising and um, and obviously the uh, the massive deal, six point seven billion dollar deal to, uh, for uh, PaySafe. In results. Um, kind of three things or well, results and trading go cardless talking very positive no new results from go cardless around there at the time of their fundraising but talking very positively about um, double doubled billings in the current year so we'll wait to see what that means how that translates to the financials later on obviously go cardless in uh, in in the um, in the direct debit uh, online direct debit space Elsewhere in payments, Boku, carrier billing and mobile listed business, EBITDA ahead of expectations, so solid trading there, and equals in the FX space, tail of two halves there, B2C business understandably hit hard by COVID, B2B business very strong, overall trading broadly flat, not a bad performance. Another area that's 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 been uh, in the uh, in the in the headlines with COVID has been uh, has been uh, pay TV pre-COVID as well, the content wars as they're called, and, and a kind of picks and shovels business in there is Amino Technologies, provider of uh, set-top box technologies uh, to enable uh, pay TV globally. And um, they've had some issues around COVID, some delays to spending and so on, um, uh, but, but fundamentally the business remains in good shape. The biggest uh, takeaway from the results from my perspective was another further shift to recurring revenue. Amino has suffered from lumpy revenue in the past and has understandably struggled to forecast that revenue and a recurring, uh, an increase, a significant increase in, the, in, in recurring revenues as a proportion of the whole is, is, should really help towards resolving that issue which has impacted on, um, has impacted on um, sentiment for, uh, for, for Amino in the past and certainly still weighs on its valuation. Uh, in the prop tech market, property has been an interesting one during COVID, um, has been much more resilient, I think, than most people expected. Beneficiaries of that, although obviously have had some impact, have been on the market and Purple Bricks. Uh, both announced uh, results uh, or trading update during uh, December. Uh, modest growth and, and a profit from on the market compared to expectations of, of break even, so positive there. And Purple Bricks. As you'll probably know, Purple Bricks massively scaled down its global ambitions in the last couple of years and is now trading positively, uh, trading profitably in the UK. Uh, revenues were down slightly, which you'd understand given the year, um, but, but, a, but, a, but a broadly positive sign there. Um, in the uh, identity management space, GB Group, uh, again, one of the kind of the heroes of the, of the quoted sector, I would say, over the last few years and continues to be so, in my opinion. Uh, GB Group issued its interims in December, 10% uh, growth organic, but that was helped by a large contract. Uh, underlying growth slightly slower than that, clearly slower than historically. Management team talked to our analysts there, and, and, and it, we knew this anyway. There was a very conscious effort or conscious decision to pull back on investment in sales and so on in GB, which to be fair, a lot of uh, businesses did uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, and that has uh, impacted growth now and will continue to impact growth going forward but it was pretty clear from the conversations that the underlying drivers remain for GB Group. They've put the foot back on the gas with investment and that feels like it's going to deliver a uh, return to uh, strong double digit growth in due course. And in the meantime profits are, have been very strong at GB because they've been cutting back on investment in headcount and so on. So there's a, there's a, there's a silver lining to the growth cloud if you like, if it is a cloud indeed. Elsewhere in private and health tech uh, the, the marriage of health tech and enterprise software uh, allocate uh, that provides uh, rostering software primarily into the healthcare sector owned by HG Capital and Vista used to be public got taken private a few years ago uh, results out and our analysts had a good chat with the management team there and that 8% uh, organic growth and interestingly again allocates another business that's up till a couple of years ago it's been largely organic but has now uh, has now been on the acquisition trail and it's, it's interesting to see how it's building its business <coughs> through organic <coughs> uh, through acquis acquisitive as well as organic means last but definitely not least a really interesting business 1e um, which is an owner managed business one of the larger owner managed owner managed businesses we track at megabyte that provides um, endpoint management and security so it's in that kind of security infrastructure software space and I think it's fair to say that 2020 was a transformative year for 1E. We've always thought it's got real 
um, potential star quality 1E, but it's 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 not quite fulfilled that promise over the last couple of years. And the reason is, is because it's got a really strong position in enterprise, but it took a strategic decision a few years ago to, to really target the mid-market, and it's invested very heavily in the product and, and business development in that. And candidly, um, you know, Neil, our analyst, had a good chat with management, as I say. They decided to pull the plug on that, uh, on that uh, strategic uh, objective at the back end of 2019. That is, uh, obviously, we won't see the numbers on this for a while yet, but uh, although uh, there was some growth uh, in 2019, losses were high. 2020, more growth than I think, uh, but the profitability will be substantially better as a result of refocusing that business. Um, you know, just another one of these examples of a theme of refocusing, not directly as a result of COVID in 1E's case, but still within that theme, I think. From my perspective, if 1E comes through to, comes through to uh, a good level of profitability and continues to grow, it is an absolute sitter for a private equity investment. Good size, potentially very profitable, pure software business. Watch this space. So that's the kind of counter through some of the, what I thought were some of the most interesting results in, uh, in, in December in our universe. I wanted just to end on um, a bit of a commentary about, or a bit of a comment on some of the things we've got coming forward or going forward. First of all, just to highlight the, uh, the quarterly barometers. These are our kind of um, cornerstone reports we do once a quarter, one on ICT and digital services, one on software and uh, digital platforms. Uh, and they really look at the, uh, the, the data and the outlook, importantly. They're, they're forward-looking reports, looking at trading, corporate activity and valuations in the 50 different sub-sectors, sub-peer groups we call them, across those two sectors we look at. Um, those will be out at the end of January. Uh, the webcasts, they will be recorded this time round and available to listen to on the new section within megabyte.com platform for subscribers. Uh, will be available a week after that, right at the end of the month. Um, so I really recommend you look at those. They're a fantastic way to just understand what's going on if you're a, if you're a, if you're a technology company to drill into what's happening in your part of the market. If you've got a, perhaps a broader perspective on the market as an investor or advisor, it's a brilliant and very efficient use of your time to try and understand broadly what's happening in the space. And of course, for those subscribers that I have access to, uh, the advanced subscription with Analyst Access can then, by all means, uh, speak to the analysts about any areas of particular interest. So that's the focus for the team during January. We're also um, doubling our efforts to create um, specific focus areas, subsector focus areas each quarter. And each of our senior analysts is going to be really looking very closely at one area each quarter. That's the idea anyway. It might extend a little bit. So we've got a lot of work going on a wealth and asset management software um, in, in, in this quarter with my colleague Rob Warenshaw, and I'm going to be working with him on that. So it's going to be really interesting. And I'm sure I'll talk more about that in the, uh, the CEO barometers over this quarter. We've got a number of calls already set up with management teams for that. Lee Prout, our head of research, is working with Cameron Naylor in the team to, uh, to look at customer engagement software in all its forms to try and bring some sense to where the key growth drivers are within that and what's happening in that part of the market from a corporate activity and valuation perspective as well. Neil Aaron, Aaron Patter in IT infrastructure services is going to take a deep dive into cloud services in local government and uh, whether that's a market that uh, is attractive and if you're in infrastructure services and cloud services, if you're not in it, whether you should be targeting in it, if you're an investor, whether it's in areas of interest, etc. And my learned colleague and business partner, Philip Kass, is going to be looking at wholesale telecoms and also B2B, FTTP and all of the trends and, uh, and themes around those parts of the telecom services market. We may also be looking in some detail at digital services. We're just working through that at the moment. Um, our analyst there, James Priest, taking a deep dive uh, potentially into uh, uh, what are digital services, where are the growth areas, where's the hype, where's the real growth coming, uh, etc. So please keep a look out for those as ever. If you're not a subscriber, as I said at the top of the call, if you would like to have more information about what we do, uh, please get in touch, go to the website, click on the request a demo and we'll look after you. Uh, that's all we had for this month. Um, please stay safe over the next few weeks in this really quite scary time we're in and uh, hope to see you all uh, next month. Thanks very much for listening.